This video is my entry for the Project for Awesome, an annual charity event on YouTube where we raise money and vote for our favorite nonprofits to give that money to. I'll reveal which organization I'm supporting in a few minutes, but first though, let me tell you a story about how powerful the scientific method can be. In the late 90s, the Harvard professor Michael Kramer was interested in improving education in Kenya. Instead of starting an education nonprofit like you might expect, he decided to do a series of randomized control trials. This is what they entailed. He randomly split up the schools that he was studying in Kenya into two groups. One group would continue their schooling as usual, and the other group would receive the new interventions, like more textbooks and more teachers. Finally, he'd compared the outcomes of the students, and, provided the sample was big enough, he could conclude that any differences between the groups was due to the intervention. As you probably know, this sort of randomized control trial is exactly how we test if a medicine is effective. But up until this point, they were unheard of in the not-for-profit sector, for obvious reasons. Of course this intervention is going to be effective. Why should we waste precious resources testing that? Well, Kramer's idea was not to test all the different interventions at once, but to test them all in separate trials to figure out which was the most effective at improving the outcomes for students. To his surprise, one of these factors worked ridiculously well. First, they tested giving out more textbooks, then providing flip charts for the teachers, and then improving the teacher to student ratio. Before I tell you the results, I want you to take 10 seconds now to guess which of these you think was most effective. Which one would you have funded if you had to choose? Okay, let's go through them. Surprisingly, the extra textbooks seem to have no real effect. A possible explanation is that these textbooks were just too high level for the students anyway, especially since they were written in English, the students' third language. So then they tried the flip charts, reasoning that the teachers could tailor the lessons to the students' ability this way. Again though, for whatever reason, this had no discernible effect on the sample they trialled. Then they tried simply having more teachers, but again, there was no effect. Frustrated that none of these had worked, Kremer decided to try a crazy suggestion that he'd received. His team gave the students medicine in school that prevented them from getting stomach worms. Stomach worms are something that many of us aren't familiar with because they're fairly rare in developed countries, but they're devastating to a person's health and far too common in some developing countries. It turned out many children in Kenya at the time were missing school because they were sick with worms. What they found in the trial was that students who had got the treatment missed school far less and as a result did far better. In fact, when researchers followed up with the students a whole 10 years later, those who had been treated were earning 20% more than those who hadn't been. For just 50 cents per child per year, this intervention had had a massive impact on their lives. The scientific method tells us that we should make hypotheses about how the world works, but then we need to test them. If they don't hold up, no matter how much it seems like they should be true, we need to abandon the theory and start the process again. In this case, you can see how powerful this process can be. Some non-profit interventions really are a lot more effective than others, so it's worth doing this sort of rigorous analysis to find them. To put this into perspective, here's some really mind-bending data. This study compared 108 health interventions in developing countries. To measure how successful a health intervention is, you want to look at how many extra healthy years of life it gives someone. One extra year of healthy life is what we'll call a DALI. This study looked at how many DALIs $1,000 spent on an intervention would buy. What they found was half the 108 interventions saved people five years or less of life for that cost. In other words, five years was the median value in this study. So you might expect that the best interventions would then save around 10 to 15 years. At least that's what I would have guessed. But actually, a whole bunch of the remaining half fall between five years to 100 years, which is great. But amazingly, there are five interventions out of the 108 that do even better. 
the best one saved 300 years for every $1,000 spent. A massive bargain compared to the median of just five years. The majority of these interventions work just okay, but some of these interventions work amazingly well. So doesn't it make sense to find these and fund them? That's where GiveWell, the not-for-profit that I'm supporting, comes in. They do extensive research on these sorts of interventions, and if you donate to them, they give that money to their top-rated initiatives. At the moment, that includes several organizations focused on deworming treatments. But GiveWell apply the scientific mindset that we should always be updating our beliefs based on the best new evidence. That's why they reassess their choices for their top nonprofits every year, and they're very transparent about how they come to their conclusions. If you want to support this sort of evidence-based giving, there are two simple things you can do. One, vote for them on the Project for Awesome website. The link is in the description. And two, share this video, because a lot of people have the idea that charity is useless and corrupt. I hope this video convinces you that it certainly doesn't have to be this way. Charity can be an effective way to help those most in need.